What's up guys? Today I'm going to be going ahead and uh, upgrading my gaming rig slash still a workstation because it's pretty much all I use them for anymore is making deep fakes and less about making uh, or playing video games. But I'm upgrading the components from my 11900K system from Z590 to the Z690 chipset using a 12900K. So stick around here for a second. I'll get some components unboxed and we'll install stuff. Stand by. <laughs> If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks. Alright, so you can see we've got our 12900K featured prominently here in the center. And the rest of the stuff, um, so like I've got my board and so forth here. My uh, previous stuff I've already taken out of the case, and I don't have the case sitting up here right now because it's really large and we won't be able to get it all in the frame. But we've got our pre-existing 980 Pro from Samsung. We've got a Sabrent. 2 terabyte NVMe, the 980 Pro has 1 terabyte for a total of 3. We've got our 12900K with an MSI Core Liquid S360, which has kind of like a little IPS display on it and allows you to see temperatures and so forth right on the block, which is kind of cool. And it will match up nicely with our motherboard, which is the MSI Mag Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi. Not the most expensive board, not the highest end board. Kind of a mid-range board. Uh, MSR, MSRP was around $400, which is, I remember back when $400 would buy you a whole computer. So whatever, uh, they're, that's cheap now, I guess. But uh, it was a bundle deal on the Newegg Shuffle with the Z690 Carbon, coupled with the G-Skill Trident Z5 5600 MHz memory. So I, uh, you know, I've been in the shuffle for, I think it only took like four or five attempts and I was able to snag the board and RAM, uh, but they weren't doing DDR5 on there for a while. So I had got this when I was on vacation, like last month, you know, several weeks ago anyway, I got that in the shuffle and it's been sitting in the box because I couldn't get any memory. Like the boards you can get, but the memory was very hard to get. So, well, once I started putting it in the shuffle, I got it pretty easily, but prior to that, I couldn't get anything. So... Without further ado, I shall go ahead and start unboxing these things, and then I will install them, and we can see what they're capable of. So first, let's go ahead and have a look at these little memory modules. The picture on the website, and actually, like even on the box, you can see it shows there's a silver version and a black version. And I thought I was getting the black version when I ordered it, but I ended up with the silver ones. I don't honestly care that much, but just for aesthetics, I think I would have preferred the black, because they would have gone with my other components a little bit better. But we're not going to, you know, we're in that beggars can't be choosers phase where we'll take what we can get because you can't get anything. Or you can't choose what you get. You just have to buy what they'll let you buy. So, they're pretty nice looking modules. Like I said, they've, they've got black and silver built in. I just think the all, all black would have gone better with the carbon board and with my existing hardware. Silver doesn't really fit in that well. If it were gray and black, like a darker gray, it would have been better, but I'm not going to complain too much. So they're nice looking little modules. Here's the uh, specifications. We've got cast latency 36. So kind of high in the latency, but for DDR5, I think this is kind of standard. And eventually, you know, I'm sure they'll release modules with lower latency, but right now, again, can't really pick what we get. So this is what we got. All right, next up, we'll go ahead and unbox the motherboard as we said z690 carbon it's not really letting me zoom out any further than this with my camera so i apologize but i'm just kind of working on a confined space here so but we'll go ahead and see what we get with this it came the box wasn't like fully sealed and i'm a little bit wondering what the deal is with that hoping that nobody else has you know already been in here for some reason so I don't really see that anybody tampered with anything like I kind of looked in when I got it because like I say it came with this tab was sort of loosened already but give me one second I'll get this stuff out we'll have a look at it I guess there's enough silver in this board that you might say it matches well enough with the RAM like I say we've got silver kind of armor plated PCI Express slots and the rest of the board's fairly aesthetically laid out 
We've got a couple, of, I think there's either two or three NVMe slots, and we've got, you know, USB-C on board, multiple SATA ports that are side-facing, which I kind of like when they're at that angle like that. I almost never use SATA anymore anyway, so it's kind of nice that they're just sort of out of the way. They're sort of getting to be a little bit legacy, uh, you know, NVMe having no cables at least is kind of a nice thing. We've got our USB 3 header there, 24 pin 12 volt. We've got the, uh, so this is like um, the Corsair header. So if you have Corsair fans and you want to use them through the MSI Mystic light, you can hook up like your Thunderbolt Pro module, I think it's called, to this header. And then you can control all your Corsair fan lighting through MSI instead. So this is the socket 1700. And I don't know that they moved the screws. I think the reason that there's a difference between 1200 and 1700 in this case is because the, the extra pins makes the CPU actually a little bit, it's not square, it's a little bit more rectangular. And because it's a little bit longer like that, uh, different blocks were not fitting to it quite right or whatever. You need like a modification kit for a lot of CPU coolers to work properly with that socket. But our MSI S360 comes with the proper bracket in the box. So we don't have to worry about that. But that was a, a concern when I was looking at things. We've got quite a bit of I.O. here. We've got, uh, well, let me see if I can get a better angle on it. Sorry, this is not quite the usual equipment. So we've got plenty of USB. We've got onboard HDMI and display port. So if you do buy a processor with an integrated video card capability and you don't want to get a dedicated card, you can use the I.O. supplied on the board. You've got a BIOS flash. USB socket, so if you had to update the BIOS and didn't have the ability to hook it up or something, I think you can do that just by plugging in a, a flash drive. But plenty of USB super speed, you got USB type C, you got a 2.5 gig Ethernet port, Wi Fi headers, and our onboard audio SPDIF out, along with your standard stuff for microphones and surround sound. And it does look like it has a nice little flash the BIOS button. So that's pro that's probably, I'm not sure if that connects to this port and just starts the flashing process or if that's a reset CMOS button because it doesn't really, I don't know, I've never seen one other like that. That's a little bit different. So what accessories came in the box? Well, it looks like there's quite a few, but we've got uh, our Wi-Fi module that would hook up to those headers, of course. We've got uh, quite a few SATA cables. This is that cable I mentioned that would let you hook up your Thunderbolt Node Pro to your uh, Corsair RGB header that we looked at a minute ago. That connects those two. We've got RGB cables. These are standard RGB by the looks of it. And then I'm sure there's, uh, yeah, these are the addressable RGB cables. It even comes with like a little keychain with with uh, screwdrivers attached to it. So you've got a little flathead and a Phillips. That's kind of nice that they include that. So you, if you don't have a screwdriver for some reason, uh, something with the MSI logo on it. I honestly don't know what this is. It seems hollow. It's got a little button on the side. Maybe I'll get that out in a sec. We'll see what it is because I really don't know what that is. Uh, we've got. Oh yeah, it comes with like a little thumb drive with all their drivers and stuff on it. So you can just uh, have the chipset drivers and everything included. You don't have to go to the site. Although, I'm sure there's newer drivers available on the website. Some kind of a screw here. This is M2 locker. Oh, okay. This is the uh, little post and screw that you use to secure an M2 drive. There's a second one in this container. Case badge stickers and paraphernalia like pamphlets and warranty card and our usual stuff about uh, registering and our manual. I don't know what this is. Thank you for choosing MSI. This product was created with great passion and we hope you enjoy it. Please register your product at yeah. All right, I probably will. Yeah. And it looks like actually it's the same manual for two different boards that they offer, so that's a little generic. But anyways, I'm gonna open up that one little package to see what we got in that one. I don't know what that thing was. So, 
this is what this thing is. It is a cleaning brush that you push on the little button on the side and you can use it to probably dust your computer. Or maybe it's for cleaning your keyboard. That probably makes a little more sense actually. But a little, uh, little sweepy. <laughs> right, anyways, next up we're going to go ahead and get the CPU out and we'll have a look at the cooling solution. And then I'll go ahead and install all this stuff and get it up and running. Alright, so here we've got our... 12900K in this sort of unusual box. It seems like they could save a few bucks by not putting it in something so extravagant, but I'm going to try to get this out here real quick. Last time the 11 series was kind of difficult to open, so hopefully they've made this a little bit easier. But I'm going to need both hands for this, probably. So give me a second. We'll get this out of the box and have a look at it. Alright, so it just comes with a little manual. And apparently the processor is inside this thing. It's like a big coin, but you twist it like a tray of cookies or something and out pops your stuff. So one sec. I don't know how the camera's focusing here. Let's see. There we go. A 912900K. And you can see it's kind of elongated or rectangular a little bit. So like the, depending on how your cooler is or like your water block, whatever it is, it may not cover that full surface or because of the orientation of like the original mounting hardware, it might be kind of misaligned, which is why I think a lot of these coolers require a difference in a, uh, like a different mounting kit because I think the actual layout around the socket, like the, um, where the screws go or like the, it's the same shape around the socket. Like I think those holes are the same locations as they were with the socket 1200. But again, because the CPU is longer, uh, depending on what you have, it may not sit quite centered or cover the entire surface of the processor. And so this is a problem that requires a different mounting hardware, which I feel like they do these things on purpose just to sell you shit. But give me one second here and we'll get access to our Core Liquid 360. And I got the plastic off there. And as you can see, it mentions directly in the box, compatibility with Intel socket LGA1700. And I verified at least according to uh, Amazon's spec sheet and so forth, and everybody's claiming that it definitely comes with the correct bracket. It doesn't just support it. That was the problem with a lot of them is that they're saying, oh yeah, like it supports 12900K, and then like in the fine print somewhere, it'll be like, oh, socket 7900 bracket sold separately, which it's like they're trying to get you to buy the cooler, but then you'd have to go to the manufacturer's site to get the bracket, and then who knows how long that would take, or what the demand level is for that sort of thing. So we've got an instruction manual on how to install it, which shouldn't be really that complicated. Usually these are pretty straightforward, at least in mounting them. So this is coming with some similar things to the motherboard that we just got. So different pamphlets, but similar. They've got their own MSI branded fans, but they're nice and just black and no RGB. I don't really like RGB that much anymore. So um, like the fact that the, the CPU block can light up and show information is cool but as far as like garish lighting i don't know if i care for it so much so we've got yeah see right on here 1700 series so it's got all the mining hardware for am4 1700 and i'm sure it works with all predecessor stuff like uh socket 1150 1151 socket 1200 uh and it supposedly will work with the thread ripper but they always say that and again it's like no <laughs> It doesn't, like, I mean, it would physically, quote-unquote, work, but this block is not anywhere nearly the rock, the size that you need to cover a Threadripper. But anyways, uh, we're not trying to do a Threadripper. So, uh, looks like a pretty big, for lack of a better word, blockhead in there with that big cooler, or that, uh, the screen on it. But we'll get this out here and have a look at it. That plastic. All right, okay, so, and we can't really see too well yet, but basically that's going to sit on there and we're going to be able to read the temperature and I think it's programmable to some degree, so I'm not sure what all information it can display yet. Looks like it's got to be connected up with the SATA power probably, which I find annoying, but whatever. Just one other thing you need a cable for in your system, you know. Uh, it's got like a USB header, so apparently for Windows to pick it up and assign a driver to it, you're going to have to hook it up to a USB header on your motherboard. And we've got a three-prong fan connector here. And for the CPU fan, even, it has another separate three-pin connector. So there's quite a few 
different connections that need to be made to get anywhere with this. Well, that's our current hardware swap out. I've already, as I said, taken everything out of the previous build. It's off to one side. The only thing that's still in there is the kingpin just kind of resting comfortably up there. I didn't feel like removing the radiator if I didn't have to, and apparently I didn't have to. So that's cool. But uh, all i got to do, basically, is connect all this stuff up outside of the box and then put it in the case and wire everything up and she should take off. So let's go ahead and do all that. All right, so I've got everything installed on the board. This was a little bit, this one corner didn't want to tighten up too good for me. And you have to tighten up the screws on it with this, like this removable screen cover. Basically the screen is actually beneath this thing. This is just a cover that goes over it and probably protects it and makes it look a little bit more aesthetic and kind of has like little cable routing guides to keep the tubes and cables kind of in a certain direction. But anyways, got that on there. Uh, this corner, like I said, didn't want to tighten down real good for a second there. It was like it kept spinning, but finally I did get it uh, to take purchase, and now everything seems to be tightened down correctly. I'm going to pull the little IO Shield plastic off of here. If it would be so kind, that's really on there. Tab up here or something. Oh, I didn't even realize there was anything on that. Get that out before I put it in the system. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and magically install it in the computer here because recording all of that and trying to get it in there would be a bit of a pain in the neck. So, presto change -o. All righty, we are up and running here. We've got our MSI block on here. I'm gonna peel off this little bit of. Oops, watch your hand. Oh, that's nice. That comes right off. Well, this is something I probably need to use two hands for, so one second. That thing's secured on there by magnets, but the uh, plastic was on there pretty good, so it was kind of pulling away. As remember, it's like an outer shell that just fits over the actual water pump and protects that little screen inside. This outer piece isn't really the screen. It's just like clear plastic that's uh, protecting our inner components, which is fine. It just uh, wasn't working so well. Hello, how are you? So, we're off and running. I've been testing it and playing around with it for a few days. This thing works pretty nice. It does give you a readout of your CPU and so forth, but I did notice that, like, if you shut their monitoring software off in Windows, like, it doesn't really give you correct temperatures after a while. It'll just sit there and say it's, like, 49 degrees, kind of indefinitely or something. So there's some weird issues with that. My kitty's here to help me out. See? What are you doing? So he's up here to check us out, but... Anyways, I've been playing around with it. It is quite fast, but I did have some issues with it, which I'll get into here in a minute. Um, but it's up and running now. Everything's been doing well. And the temperatures uh, with the MSI 
360 here are doing quite nicely. Um, I think the max I've seen it hit was like 70 very briefly, but it usually seems like it hangs around in the 60s most of the time, and that's on kind of the high end. And when I'm doing like deep fake, deep learning, it's like in the high 40s to 50. Uh, so very cool. In one second here, we'll get into Windows and we'll start uh, doing some benchmarks and stuff, and just kind of looking at the software that's used to make this thing work. So give me one second. All right, first up, we've got our MSI Center software. So you can download that from uh, the MSI website. Uh, specifically the support page for the Z690 Carbon series board had this software in the utilities support section. Download that and install it and go into, I believe, features for the core liquid device. And you can see we've got <clears throat> some of these, it seems like it just freezes up and doesn't work too good yet. So I think that this is early access software probably. Sorry, my cat's wanting to get up in my lap here. Um, but you can change like the background image to some pre-selected stuff. You can have it show your clock. Uh, looks like you can make a custom banner and probably add your own. Yeah, see, so you've got access to do uh, bitmaps, JPEGs, and GIF images up to 320 by 240 pixels. So you do have some options on changing the background image. You can change the orientation of the image. I figured that out earlier, and now I'm doing a little bit of a, a head scratcher. I, I guess I can figure it out again. Oh, yeah, the direction. So you can tell it, depending on how you've oriented the block, see... Like I have the tubes on the right hand side, so that's what I've selected. But you can also do, if you mounted it different directions and had to put the tubes on a certain side, you can change how it orients the image. Hey, what are you doing? Cat's getting out of my way. But you can change the clock and show different, you know, the time on there, which, you know, whatever, that's kind of cool, I guess. You have a live weather feed, uh, open location and network to use live weather function. Interesting. So I'm not going to screw with that, but that's an option apparently. But I have it showing uh, the clock frequency, the temperature, the pump speed, and radiator fan speeds. And I could probably drop those, but we'll see if it even does it or not. Because this thing is a little squirrely, like it likes to sit here at this loading screen for a while and then not actually do anything. So this is MSI software being a little bit of a, yeah, see, it just likes to hang. I don't really care so much about what it displays. Um... Yeah, it looks like it worked. I could show you guys, but basically it's just swapping between uh, the clock frequency and the temperature now. Now it says it's running at like 50 degrees on the block. And maybe it was briefly now here. Now, okay, it went back down to 32. I think only like when this page is up for some reason, does it actually do a good job of showing on the block what's on the software. Because like I said, I've had it, if I just close this out entirely, it's like sometimes it stops working properly and doesn't show correctly on the block what it really is running at. But this thing is running at like 5 gigahertz all the time. So some interesting issues we've had with the 12900K has been it's like you know the efficiency core thing. So it has 16 regular CPU cores and 8 efficiency cores. And to my understanding, the efficiency cores handle like background Windows tasks while the standard cores do the more heavy lifting. But initially when I installed it, I had problems with uh, what they call like the clock scheduler. I'll just show you guys in CPU-Z like what some of the specs are that we're dealing with. But the clock scheduler on it, according, like apparently in Windows 10, it didn't work so good. And so, uh, yeah, see 16 cores, but it mentions 24 threads because it reads the other eight cores, like not as cores, but it's just threads. Uh, I think probably need to update this and maybe it'll read it more correctly, but like it's mentioning our DDR5, 32 gigs, etc., etc. C690 carbon. But the the problems I was having was like when I tried to run Deep Face Lab, initially it didn't work at all. And the problem I had had was that it had reset my page file when I swapped out from DDR4 to DDR5. So I'd update my page file. And now that was working fine. And then what it would do is it would just hang after like 15 minutes. Like it didn't crash or anything. It just kind of stopped training the model. And so what it turned out to be was I needed a BIOS update on the MSI website. I guess I can jaunt over there real quick and we can uh, pull that up. Z690 Carbon Wi-Fi drivers. Go to their site and support BIOS. And as it see, it says uh, supports Intel Tile technology, which I believe has something to do with, uh, you know, again, 
the efficiency core slash non-efficiency core layout of the chip, updates the microcode and improved performance of BIOS features. So I don't know if they improved in the BIOS necessarily, but basically uh, updating to this BIOS 7 Delta 30 Victor 11 solved my problem with how it was working with Deep Face Lab. And the only other thing that's kind of interesting that I'm still noticing with Deep Face Lab is like, if I minimize Deep Face Lab in the background, uh, and like have window, you know, like looking at Chrome or something, watching a YouTube video, and I come back to it, I'll see that it's kind of been slow, and then it'll pick speed back up again. It's like it considers that a background program when it's not in the forefront, and it runs it probably at least partially on the efficiency cores, and then it doesn't work as fast. So I have a feeling that um, totally disabling the efficiency cores, which to my understanding you can do in the BIOS, I haven't screwed with it, and uh, I guess if anybody wants me to actually disable them, let me know, and I can try running things with and without the efficiency cores turned on, but I haven't screwed with that yet. But I think uh, if I shut them off, it probably wouldn't do that. It would probably work better, really. But it's uh, that that's one of the things I noticed was I think it runs things on the efficiency cores if they're not like in the foreground. And so sometimes I'd come back and find instead of like five to six hundred milliseconds per iteration, it was running at like a thousand or twelve hundred per iteration. But as soon as I brought the program back up to the forefront, it started running at the proper speed again. And it is faster than the 11900K for deep learning. I have noticed that there is a somewhat of an uptick in speed per iteration again, but it's like it, it's marginal. Uh, and again, the 11900K never had any kind of the weird aberrant issues that are being caused by these efficient efficiency cores. So was it worth upgrading just for that alone? No, not really. Uh, I mean, it does give me some f future provability, like when DDR5 of faster speeds becomes available, I'll be able to use that. Like again, this is 5600 megahertz, which is you know a little higher than the 4800 megahertz uh, DDR5 specification that I think is like you know the the stock DDR5 speed is 4800 megahertz, but um, so it's faster than that, but it's not like it's mind blowing or anything. I know that uh, like that Kingston set I had tried to order, which I don't know whatever happened with that. I got to call CDW and probably just cancel that order, but that was 6,000 megahertz. And I know you can get faster than that already out of the box. Um, and I'm sure down the pike, you know, we'll be seeing stuff they were talking about like 10 gigahertz and faster. So we'll be seeing really fast RAM. So one day, you know, maybe I can update to that and use faster memory and the board and this, uh, you know, the, this Z690 setup offers PCI Express Gen 5 slots. So when the next generation of GPUs comes out, like the RTX 4000 series, will almost certainly be PCI Express Gen 5. I'll have the proper slot to use that, although there'll be probably really no difference between running it on a Gen 5 slot and a Gen 4 slot, just to be able to say that it's at least working at the proper bandwidth. Uh, this board does offer that. So next up, I guess what I'll do is I'll go ahead and run some tests. I haven't really done a whole lot of benchmarks on it yet, but I have played some games, and I did notice that, uh, like Cyberpunk, for example, uh, I've tried it at 5K, like 5220 by, well, like 4K ultra wide, 5120 by 2160, um, with like everything on max, DLSS it to auto, and I was getting like 70 frames a second, and this is, of course, paired with my RTX 3090 Kingpin Edition, but this is everything at stock. I haven't overclocked it or anything like that, and it's still is pretty much walking all over some things. So uh, give me a second, we'll load up some tests. Alrighty, so we've got ourselves a 10,092 score on 3D Mark, or excuse me, Time Spy Extreme. And I'm bringing up here like the max, the temperature hit was 74 briefly, and that, I'm sure it's during the actual CPU test because these have a legit dedicated CPU test built into them, versus, uh, what is this thing? Score has not been validated online. Internet connection is disabled. Mm -hmm. Validation setting is disabled in the options screen. Neither of those are accurate. Maybe it doesn't, uh, I don't know what the problem is or why it's, it's bitching about validating the score, it says. But the CPU test, yeah, it doesn't load the GPU much, of course. But again, hit a maximum of 74 degrees. I can't really use like my overlay software yet with this. It seems like it doesn't know what a 12900K is. Um, like it can't read all the cores correctly, which is sort of interesting. Hmm. So the GPU temperature. 
never got much about like like right at 50 pretty much that's it 3090 kingpin with the uh 360 all in one on there and like i said the cpu is spiking up to a brief temperature maximum pretty high temperature maximum let's see if it shows yeah the frequency of the cpu pretty much stayed like right five gigahertz all the time spiked up there just a little bit like 5.1 5.2 almost for just a brief second during the cpu test of course it was spiking a little higher i guess but uh gpu stayed pretty much stock the whole time nothing really changed much throughout the test but 10,280 was our graphic score cpu score of 9147 according to Time Spy Extreme. So I guess I'll run a couple more of these, like Port Royal, and then we'll try some games. Just, uh, I got on the 3D Mark website so I could do a side-by-side -side comparison of like the last time I ran this test with the 11900K versus the current test with the 12900K and the CPU test. Like, what, what's interesting is like the graphics score was actually slightly higher than the 11900K, and again, I think this is probably something to do with those efficiency cores not working um you know perfectly well with with some of these benchmark softwares like this is an older test maybe it doesn't work so well with 1200k if i shut the efficiency cores off what would happen that kind of thing but you can see that the cpu score went from like 5700 to like 9147 a 60 uh, just over a 60 percent jump on the cpu score so the 12900K is definitely a faster processor, which is like, duh, but yeah, um, major changes there, at least in this particular benchmark. We'll try some other ones, of course, and see what kind of results we get, but that's pretty good uh, indicator of how much better job we're getting out of that. So that's interesting. You know, it has way more physical cores. The 11900K only has eight actual cores, and then it has hyper-threading, whereas the 12900K has no hyper-threading, but twice as many physical standard cores and the extra eight efficiency cores so it's really you know not a great comparison even but just going from one generation to the next you can see the jump that we made so that's kind of a cool thing to look at all right i'm gonna run another test so this we did a little port royal action here and this is way more just pushing on the gpu so the cpu only ever got to like 54 degrees which is really good and the gpu still never even hit 50 degrees on this because of the the aggressive cooling and the way i've got my fans set up on my um in my system is i've actually got everything running off the video card like the c the cpu has like a um you know like a three-way fan splitter on it that you're supposed to connect the fans to but i connected them all into my video card instead because the kingpin and a lot of the newer cards like the 3090s anyway on the back end of the card there's a fan header on them and you can hook up like a case fan to it but i use a three-way splitter on that header and then connect all my cpu fans to that and then the gpu also has a three front prong out because it's uh the kingpin edition so i hook the gpu's own fans to itself and i hook all the cpu fans to the gpu so whenever i change any speeds in ebga precision x1 it just affects all those fans and then i took um like just some regular case fans and hooked them up to the to the aio for the cpu but this is a uh, port royal now, I figured there's like a validate button here that I hadn't hit before. That's why it wasn't, uh, for some reason, it's not automatically touching their server to find out, um, you know, like the comparison. Let's see what, um, if I can compare this to like my last time running this uh, with my 11900K. One second. So doing a comparison here, actually, like it looks like I did a little bit better on the 11900K. Looks like the processor was overclocked to 5.3 though, so that's probably got something to do with it. CPU, or the GPU is still at stock on both of these from the looks of things, but the CPU was overclocked a bit. Uh, it was the last like relevant result I really had from Port Royal with the 11900K, so I know it's not really apples to apples, but um, the CPU doesn't matter a huge amount then here with, with that. Different driver versions and different versions of like, a, you know, Port Royal too, like they update, well I guess the same version of Port Royal, so whatever, but driver version changes and all that sometimes affect how well things turn out here too not really a different relevant difference in performance there to speak of this is like i just thought it was funny this is the um sli 3090s i had done on my threader briefly there just a slight improvement over the other two just about double <laughs> all right anyways um but you can see the temperature i'm getting 
on my 12900K with this cooler. It's really quite good at only 46 degrees at average temperature it ran. So that's pretty nice. Uh, we'll run another one, like another benchmark, and then I'll probably try some games. For this last test, I'm going to run uh, Superposition at a 1080p extreme because this should refund the CPU a lot more instead of the GPU. A little bit lower resolution, but really high settings. The GPU, uh, you know, if I went up to 4K or whatever, we wouldn't really be seeing as much of the benefit from the processor so much. So I'm going to reset our temperature readout, and we're going to see what temperatures we hit running at a lower resolution but high setting test. So let's find out what that does. All right, so the average frame rate was about 95, the maximum of 113, and a minimum of 72. GPU temperature maxed at 50, which seems to be about where we ever end up capping out with on this 3090, at least at stock frequencies. And the CPU, uh, does it mention it in here? No, but the maximum temperature of the CPU was only 57 degrees on that test. So even though it was a uh, you know, more CPU bound test than the higher resolutions would have been, it uh, surprisingly did a pretty good job and did not get that hot. So that cooler really does a pretty fantastic job of keeping this thing tamed. Um, like they recommend like a 280 millimeter res, uh, radiator all in one cooler for it. So like, you know, I don't know if that's like a minimum, but that was the recommendation was a 280 all in one. So, you know, getting to 360 seems to be enough to definitely keep it under control, but I don't know, uh, you know, like what the minimum cooler would be that that you could still safely use it, but it would definitely be getting pretty hot if we didn't have this kind of aggressive cooling on there. And I have the uh, the fan set, the Precision X1, as I mentioned, to like 70% all the time. Because as they say, it's easier to keep something cool than it is to let it get hot and try to cool it back down again. So I typically just start with a fairly high, you know, fan setting, but not so high as to be too loud. I think that everything like 65 to 75% seems like it's never too loud and it does a good job of keeping things from ever getting too hot in the first place. So we've still got resizable bar enabled, etc., etc. So I guess um, I will try some games. I'm kind of curious to see um, if there's much of a change in frame rate between, like, you know, if I start recording or turn off the recording in OBS and see if it will still, you know, like if it hits the frame rate much. Um, using a video encoder, maybe it really won't be too big of a deal. I want to try loading up like Cyberpunk. I want to see if I can record that and use like an overlay, and you guys can kind of see how well it runs despite uh, you know using this using the computer to record at the same time. So give me one second here. All right. So the company that makes this overlay software was kind enough to put out an update between the last time I ran it and this morning that seems to have corrected their inability to read the 12900K cores. So we are actually able to see all of our CPU cores and the temperatures that they are constantly changing between and utilization and all that good shit. So that's nice. And our GPU and our frame rate and all these wonderful little, little percentages and whatnot. So this is Cyberpunk. This should have everything on max settings at 4K. I had, uh, let's set it to Psycho. And go ahead and we'll just load this thing up. Hello, hello. I'm Erica Cross. And, and this is with me recording the game, so there's probably going to be some loss in performance because I'm, of course, recording and playing at the same time. But you can see pretty smooth frame right here. And this is with Auto DLSS, which I think does a pretty good job of making the game still look nice, uh, but keeping a good frame rate. Like I've, I've tried playing it with uh, everything on max and just shutting the DLSS off. You still get like 25 frames a second. The day may come when you can play this game without DLSS, but it is not this day. At least not trying to run it in 4K, of course. You could probably run it, you know, 1080p or something like that. Shut all that off. It'll be interesting to see like how much better or worse one of them looks. Ah, uh, the old clipping through the stairs routine. I see that old chestnut. This game is still pretty buggy. It's a lot better than it used to be, but just uh, 
The other day I was goofing around in it and I still had like cars falling out of the sky on top of things for no reason. I haven't played this in a while, I don't really remember what the hell I'm doing. I never did finish the game, I got to a certain point and honestly I just kind of lost interest in it. Like the main story didn't really engage me that much and I wanted to do what I wanted to do, I didn't want to be... I should just walk right through that guy, that's nice. But I didn't want to be doing the main story. I wanted to be just playing around and going around and killing people. Or like, kind of like GTA 5 lets you have that freedom. This game doesn't really... You can kind of run around and just beat up bad guys, but it gets boring pretty quick. You really can't have the kind of mayhem in this game that you can in GTA. I think I can call... My caliber... See if we can start some good. Yeah. Woo. Oh, sorry about that. Good. So sorry, I didn't see you there. Dropping down into the lower. There's no damage to my car, but that car is just gone. Apparently the cops don't care that I'm killing everybody still. I thought they'd fix some of this and added some sort of uh, law enforcement. Some that made sense, but whatever. Frame rate's dropping in like the low 50 range. Again though, I am recording and playing at the same time, so there's some expected performance loss. I can't believe it. I've just been smearing people and nobody gives a damn. Oh goodness. I still don't think the driving in this game is particularly intuitive or, or responsive either. Like, uh... <laughs> Granted, I'm not trying very hard, but uh... I don't, look at all the traffic. And maybe you can see a little damage to the car, I guess. But the amount of damage I've caused to other people that have just a little bit, some, like a little ding in my hood, you know, it's a little bent out of shape, but it's not really. Oops, sorry, I didn't see you there, Porsche. Hey, pal, what's up? Good <laughs> job. Yeah, you're right, I do probably need to get a job instead of doing this crap. Oh, wrong way. Alright, now we're starting to see, finally the car is starting to look appropriate for the amount of damage I've done to it. I kind of wonder if, like, that's permanent. I don't think it is. Like, if I call the car again later, I think it's just fixed. I should probably have to pay for that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Parts flying. Starting to come off. Alright, that's cool. Can't get out of the car. I wonder if I've welded my door in here. There you go. <laughs> I think the door might have been kind of damaged shut. Well, looks like our, you know, CPU temps, that main core at the top there is hitting like mid set, low to mid 70s once in a while, like 74, but tends to be in the 60s. A couple more, like it says core 5. I'm not really sure how it's or organizing those cores specifically, but it looks like core 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 16 are probably our primary cores, and then the ones that it doesn't have a numbering on might be the efficiency cores. So maybe it's like handling the recording with the efficiency cores and playing the game with the regular ones. That's See, if they could figure out how to get all that to work properly with the clock schedule, that would be pretty cool. Oh, hero. Oh, he just spawned out of nowhere. Like, that's still pretty much a constant problem. This game is, like, pop-in and clipping and weird AI issues and stuff. Hopefully, I don't know, like a year from now, it'd be nice to see if they'd addressed a bunch of this stuff and made the game a lot more like it was supposed to be in the first place. Wow, we're actually getting down to the 40s now. Now, this is with everything on, like, psycho settings, so... I'm going to stop recording for a second and just see how much of a difference there is. Really, there was, like, basically no difference. Uh, like, a difference of, like, one frame per second or something. Now I get out of there and I get in here and now we're back up to, like, 60. Oh, 
it's all very playable in 4K, but like I say, uh, still maybe not as wondrous as I thought it would be. Let's try dropping it down to 1080p here. I'll be back in a second. We'll lower the settings and see how the game runs at a lower resolution. Alrighty, so I've set it down to 1080p. And I'm going to try cutting DLSS off for the fun of it. And let me uh, turn my overlay back on. So basically, 1080p DLSS off runs maybe about the same or a little bit better. CPU temps are fairly comparable. Still getting good GPU utilization even at 1080p. Oh, you're doing something illegal, don't do that. Yeah, no, maybe shit. <laughs> Did I actually shoot his tire out or does it? No, it doesn't do anything. There's no effect, they don't notice, and they. St wow. That's lame. Like, nobody cares that you're shooting their car. Or, you know, them. I saw blood coming out of that. I think I might have nailed that one. Yeah. Wow. That's just sad. There's no bullet hole. Frame rate's still around 60-ish. Actually dropping below 60 now. Ay ay ay. Again, this is a uh, no deal assess. Beg your pardon, you. Alright, I think that's enough cyberpunk. I'm gonna load up something else here in just a second. Hang on. Oh jeez. So I went ahead and loaded up uh Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice because uh, they did an overhaul for this game here recently with the uh, with the graphics at least and they added in like DLSS options. I'm going to shut it off for now because I don't think we really need it but um, they added DLSS. It can now use uh, AMD FSR which is nice and they added ray tracing which made, man, the game already I thought looked pretty good before but well we'll see if you guys like it here. If I have any combat in this area, I guess. Well, actually, I think the reason I have DLSS on was because of the ray tracing. Uh, let me turn on. Yeah, I seem to get about 35 frames a second because more ray tracing. Let's go ahead and uh, go back for quality on that. And now we are at a balmy. 50 to 60, 70 range. This is with HDR off because apparently OBS can't capture HDR, so. I don't really remember what I'm supposed to do at this point in the game, I guess. It would have been nice if I had had a area with some combat or something. But we're just testing how it runs anyway. This is a really beautiful game. A lot of people don't apparently like it. Or something I was reading the forum the other day. People were saying they didn't care for it. Like they didn't like the story or they thought it was boring. I mean, I get that there's like not a whole lot of combat. What combat is isn't, isn't terribly challenging. But I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's a beautiful game to look at. I still dropped down in like the 40s there on frame rate. Let me try... Um, 
balance performance so we got quality balance performance and off let's go to balanced i guess now we're getting 70 ish i think the game still looks great like no matter what you set it to I like sit now. I think I went the wrong way. Whatever. We're just looking at the visuals anyway. We're not gonna fight anything, I guess. But using about 13 gigs out of our 32. Got up to 80 frames a second there for a second. Looks like the CPU is still maybe getting into the low 60s. Eh, jump to 66 appears to be like the spike. 65, 66. Definitely a beautiful. Now look at that. This is what kills me about like Cyberpunk. We were playing a minute ago. I can look down and see her reflection in the water. You still can't even do that in Cyberpunk, a game that's supposed to be all about the ray tracing and like reflections and so forth. You know, a year after it came out, and you still can't even see your own character reflected. All right. Well, that's running pretty well. Um. I don't know, I think I might load up like one more game. I was going to try to do Assassin's Creed Valhalla and do the uh, benchmark in that and then probably call it good for the video. So let's do that here real quick. Alright, I got AC Valhalla loaded up here. Let's run our benchmark here in a second. We've got anti-aliasing on low because at 4K you really don't want to screw with it anyway. Everything else should be as high as it can go. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure I changed that, but it seems like it wants to do what it wants to do today. All right. It's like it's not centered. The problem I'm having is I'm playing this out like I'm doing this on my um, my ultra wide display, and instead, like I've set it to run at Windows, you know, set Windows run on at 4K instead of 5120 by 2160 because OBS cannot record 5120 by 2160. It just errors out when you try it. It's something to do with the NVIDIA encoder can't handle it yet or something, so it doesn't work. Um, and so you have to set it to 4K to do any kind of recording on this. I, I really should just go back to using a native 4K display when I do these videos, I guess, because it's stretching and doing weird things. Like, I'm having to run it in borderless windowed half the time and doing things just to get it to fit in the screen. If I set it to full screen, it's like it stretches across the entire display and you get, like, this weird lines through it and so forth because it's stretching out the image incorrectly. Um, again, it's because I'm using this ultra-wide display. It doesn't like it, but... You can see the frame rate, at least this, we have an overlay for this, even though like normally on the right hand side it would be showing the frame rates and so forth because it's cut off on the right, we can't see it, but we have our own overlay and we're getting around 75 frames a second, which is really quite good for the scheme in 4K. The scheme doesn't have DLSS or anything, I don't think. So that's doing a pretty nice job, honestly. Yeah, see it. It's cut it off on the right for no for because of that weird issue. But we were able to watch it. We were getting a pretty nice, pretty nice frame rate throughout the whole time. Average. I mean, the average right there it says is seventy five. Uh, you know, when it loads up, it always has like a little low minimum spike there. But uh, running it very nicely still says I'm running on Windows ten when I'm not. I'm running on Windows eleven, so this doesn't even know what OS I'm on. But uh, I said that ran pretty nicely. Um, I guess if you guys have any requests or, or tests you'd like me to run, let me know. Um, I could try to go ahead and do another video if somebody wants me to try this with, like, try to figure out how to shut off the efficiency cords and see if it improves things or makes it worse or about the same. But otherwise, I guess if you guys have questions, ask them in the comment section below. Uh, consider giving the video a thumbs up if you liked it. That helps me in the algorithm. 
Uh, leave any kind of a comment just to say hi. That helps me in the algorithm. And consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to continue to build up uh, the subscriber base. So I appreciate everybody watching. We'll talk to you guys again real soon. Have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas to everybody. Take care.